So hello again, everybody, and welcome to this webinar. Um, today, we have the pleasure to have quite a few speakers, guest speakers, because we have six people with us. Um, so we have Rafael Montero Braga, Stefania Altieri, Alessandro Bogliolo, Liliana Fernandez, Francisco Mazero, and Ariana Blasic. Sorry if I mispronounce some surnames, you, you can correct me later. Um, the topic we will explore today is uh, code Code Week, and, uh, which is an initiative that aims to bring digital literacy and coding to everyone in an engaging and fun way. And we have the pleasure um, to have um, Coding at Schools and the STEM e training feature groups partnering together to deliver this one hour focus on Code Week. So just a technicality before starting, if you have any questions or curiosity, you can always type it in the chat and we will make sure to collect them. And if there's time at the end of the webinar to try to answer to some of them. So without uh, further ado, I will now leave the floor to our speakers who will guide you into the topic. Enjoy this webinar. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for the introduction, Alessia. And as you can see now, uh, this is just a, a friendly advice that we are going to record the webinar and it will be later available both in the coding at schools and in the STEM feature group of a twinning. Um, we are going to begin. Uh, this is the agenda of the webinar that we're going to have in the next 55 minutes. Uh, we will try to condense a lot of information. So this is going to be really packed uh, with info. Hopefully you will uh, have a good introduction to what is Code Week and the importance of for us teachers to involve our students in this grassroots activity. As you can see, we will begin with a very quick intro. This is part of what we are uh, going now to do, both myself, Rafa, and my friend and fellow colleague, uh, Stefania, and then we will uh, leave the floor to the rest of the participants. Uh, we will have, first of all, Ariana Blasic, and then we will have Liliana and Francisco. Finally, we will have Alessandro, and as uh, Alessia explained, we will have a, a quick Q&A at the end of the webinar. So, um, first of all, uh, to present both the Coding at School and the STEM feature groups of uh, Twinning, uh, who we are in order of appearance. So, first of all, I am the first one, just because I, I am beginning the webinar. Uh, my name is Rafael, Rafa, Rafa Montero, uh, and I am a STEM teacher. I teach mathematics and technical drawing, um, and I am very focused on helping my students develop scientific scientific vocations. To do that, these kind of activities such as Code Week are key. Uh, then we have Stefania, and uh, I think you can present. Stefania, come on. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. I am an Italian teacher currently working at the Ministry of Education. I like, I like ICT and digital education, and I really believe in the teacher's role in training new generations for a better and responsible future. I am a leading teacher uh, of Code Week. I am a coding at schools uh, e-twinning group moderator, and I am also a scientific ambassador. Uh, then we have Ariana. Uh, the, both the presenters are here. So Ariana, if you want to say some few words about yourself. Hello, hello everyone. It's a huge pleasure to me to be here with you today because I'm also an e twinning teacher and e twinning ambassador. Uh, currently, I work as a freelance teacher as an uh, external expert for European Schoolnet, and uh, I contribute to the development of materials and resources for EU Code Week, and I'm very happy to be here and share with you what we offer and what you can find in uh, Code Week. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Ariana. Uh, we also have Liliana. So, Liliana, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Liliana. I'm a teacher from Portugal. And among a lot of other things, I love coding and ICT, and I love teaching it to kids and watching it blossom in their eyes and in their lives. So I hope to share some of my activities and learn with uh, with all my colleagues and uh, inspire you to join us in this new uh, episode of Code Week. 
Uh, thank you very much. Fran, now it's your turn. Hello, Rafa. Hi, greetings from Spain. Well, uh, I'm a Spanish secondary education teacher. I, uh, and I'm, I am Godwick a leading teacher for three years, but uh, currently I am a Godwick ambassador. I'm working in the Ministry of Education mm. and Employment of Extremadura. It's a, an area uh, near from Portugal in the west of Spain. And I'm uh, currently coordinating the program uh, Future Classroom Lab. It's uh, similar to, to Godwick family but uh, speaking about spaces. But uh, I'm going to present many activities that people can do in Cold Week. Well, thank you very much, Fran. Then we also have Alessandro. He will present himself in when it's his time. So let's talk a little about, uh, I am going to do a very brief introduction of what the STEM feature group is. And then my fellow uh, colleague, Stefania, will do the same with the coding at school. So in the STEM feature group, that is very easy to find. You just write STEM in the um, group search in the twinning. It's a feature group. You can also find it in that tab. We do STEM, so science, technology, engineering, engineering mathematics, and all the broad things and, that come with it. Uh, we specialize in European STEM projects. There are a lot of them, and we try to disseminate them our, among all our participants. And we try to foster STEM tuning projects in specific and joint Erasmus projects between our uh, participants. Uh, all in all, we are one of the uh, first uh, feature groups. We have more than uh, 11,000 members and we have been active since the beginning of the feature group. So that's 2015, quite, not, quite a long time ago. Uh, you are all uh, obviously more than invited to be part of the group. So that's all on my part and all the remember, as it was already said, both the recording and all the slides that we are using will be available later in both the Coding at School and the STEM feature groups. And here you have my email in case you want to contact me or reach out to uh, try to help you with any question. So I leave the floor to my fellow uh, friend, Stefania. Thank you. Thank you, Rafael. Uh, my name is Stefania Artiri, as I told you before. I am uh, the moderator of uh, Coding at Schools feature group. Additionally, I am a leading teacher for EU Code Week, and I take immense pride in my role in promoting coding and digital skills within schools through these initiatives. The growth of the Coding at School group uh, and the increasing interest in coding among teachers and students are clear indicators of the significance of digital literacy and STEM education in today's world. In Coding at Schools, uh, in, in our group, we can access not only theoretical approaches to programming, but also best practices, along with examples of unplugged activities, scratch games, kits, uh, and resources that can help you in teaching coding to your students. Uh, it's truly heart heartening to witness teachers coming together to exchange experiences and enhance their skills to provide the best learning opportunities for their, their students. The integration of programming and STEM into various school subjects is a remarkable development in education. It not only equips students for the job market, but also fosters problem solving skills and innovation with uh, because it's a paramount in 21st century. The COVID-19 pandemic has without a doubt accelerated the, adopt the adoption uh, of new technologies and innovative teaching methods. It has compelled educators to adapt to online learning environments and explore innovative approaches to engage students in digital education. Despite the challenges posed by the pandemic, it's inspiring to note that participation in EU Code Week has continued to grow. This underscores the resilience and dedication of teachers and students in the face of adversity. I want to express my gratitude to all of you 
for your efforts in promoting coding and digital literacy in schools. And I wish you continued success in your crucial world work. Uh, if you have any question or need further information or support, please don't, don't hesitate to ask in our chat and we will answer to all uh, questions at, 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 at the final part of this webinar. Before I pass the floor to my colleagues, I would like to share an example that can serve as a source of inspiration and guidance for both beginners and expert, uh, people that have many, many experiences and are interested in integrating coding and robotics in their teaching. Many educators may still feel apprehensive and some frequently ask me where to begin the answer is very simple because students, even the young ones, can help you embark on this journey. We can employ robotics as an educational tool to make lessons interactive and creative by involving various disciplines such as art, English, science, technology and maths. In e twinning projects based on coding and robotics, we only we, we not only enhance the learning experience, but also highlight the real world applicability of soft skills and programming competencies. On focus, uh, our focus has been uh, on addressing global challenges, particularly environment issue, issues and sustainability through coding by aligning coding activities with the United Nations Agenda 2030 goals. And we can instill a sense of responsibility and citizenship in students, empowering them to see coding as a tool for positive change. Mitch Resnick perspective on offering opportunities for active exploration, experimentation and self-expression perfectly aligns with the potential of coding and robotics in education. These tools uh, empower students to take control of their learning and creativity, thereby Forcing critical thinking and problem solving skills. It's, a, it, it's essential to acknowledge the collaborative efforts for partners and colleagues in promoting quality education and digital skills. Together, we can make a significant impact on the educational landscape. I would like to extend my thanks to my uh, um, esteemed partner, Rafael, and the uh, EU Quebec uh, team, uh, Alessandro, Tomas, and Ariana, and uh, the twinning staff, Marta and Alessia, are with us, and our experts, uh, Liliana and Francisco, and all of you, because uh, of your job, of your tireless to offer the best education to our students. Th thank you to be here and uh, see you at the end of this webinar. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. So hello, everyone. Uh, as I told you before, I'm Liliana. I'm a primary school teacher from Portugal. And this is a simple activity mostly to encourage the newcomers uh, to just try to help you understand that there is no fear in approaching these issues, mainly with younger students. So uh, I prepared a small presentation for today. Uh, in this activity, you can work with five to six year olders and this uh, this activity it's called the the vegetable dwarfs okay something is happening here i'm not okay now i'm sharing my screen um, it's called the the dwarf vegetables and i uh, usually do it around this time of year because it's uh, international food day on the next 16th of october so this is a small story that you can present to your students you can either choose uh, how to present it you you have here uh, a link for a slide share free presentation or you can adapt it into your own slide presentation. So step one, you just have to tell the story, present the characters and then discuss the importance of eating vegetables in order to link the activity into your curriculum. On step two, 
you hand out some Lego bricks to your students, the same amount of Lego bricks and the same type, same color, and then ask them to build Arthur, which is the main character from the story. When time finishes, you ask your students to show their constructions to their colleagues and then discuss similarities and differences between ducks. And the aim of this activity is to show them that there are different paths to reach the same goal. So kind of there's no wrong way to do it, but several uh, right ways to achieve the same uh, goal. On step three, you hand out a copy of a map. You can either use the one that I can share or make your own copy. I did this with a simple free app, a simple grid with letters and numbers, just to help students move their little duck around the map and ask them to, to register all the ways that they, they perform to reach the challenges that you pose them. For instance, you can ask them to take Arthur to eat some tomatoes or to collect some oranges. And uh, Arthur always starts from his little house in the forest and then has to move around the map. And then you ask students to register their path. And here you have some examples of my students doing it when building Arthur, their duck, analyzing options or coding ways. In this classroom, we have an interactive board, but you can also do it when using a whiteboard. You can draw it in the board and then ask students to go and move around and also register the way they perform and register in their own notebooks as well. And then you can take Arthur outside. If you have a sunny day, you can bring a yellow T-shirt and hand it out to a student, which will be Arthur, and ask another one to be the coder and then uh, the coder will send Arthur through the mat that you draw on the floor and all the others will register the way. You can do this challenge in both ways. Either the, the coder will be registering the, the path that Arthur decides to do, or on the other hand, the coder can do it by uh, sending Arthur through different directions and then see um, if it reaches uh, the point that you want him to, to reach. So in a short way, this was the activity that I had to share with you, which is aimed at five to six year olds and you can easily use to start uh, when uh, you are newcomers to, to these code week activities and these code week experiences. Francisco, I think I managed to keep within my seven minutes. Thank you, Liliana. Well, um, I'm going to share the um, my screen i don't know if you want to to see the activities and well there are um, many activities to do um, in code week but i don't know your level if you would uh, don't want uh, or don't know anything about robotics or you are a high level master, you can choose many activities because we share 25 activities. Uh, I want to uh, show you the link in the chat uh, uh, after my presentation and you, you want to, uh, you can um, show uh, or, or see um, the different activities because each, acti uh, each activity uh, have a link and you can um, read all the activities in different languages because many of them are in all the languages of uh, European Union. It's very easy and very uh, easy to, to do. For example, the first activity, do an uh, unplug activity you don't need um, anything you can do um, activities with your your papels and for example you can see in spanish <laughs> because it's my own language but you can see different activities or create a circuit uh, with a battery and a led is very easy is very common is the first pa um, level to when you show uh, the activity with uh, your students. And another very interesting is use um, uh, this activity is, uh, if you don't know a robot, you can use an online uh, applications like that. For example, 
you can use an alphabet math or a car math or different uh, maths, for example, a, a dice, and you can program this um, tool and use with the, the own computer. It's very, very easy and you don't need uh, the robot. If you have a robot, it's better, but you can use different activity. It's very interesting uh, to follow Code Week on social networks because there are many uh, people sharing activities and uh, different um, uh, podcasts, uh, videos, different uh, resources, and is is good. And if you can contact with uh, leading teachers, and um, you can see in the web page and um, in the community the different um, ambassadors or leading teacher. For example, in, in my uh, country, we are five uh, ambassadors. And you can uh, choose uh, uh, your own country in this list. It's very, very useful. And you can contact uh, with us. And many, many activities practice with for robots or to create uh, a, a mat for uh, these robots or interact uh, with different types of sensors. When you have uh, a robot, you can program the route, you can use the um, different sensors, or if you want to uh, you use um, a programmation to or you program um, with Scratch, for example, is very um, interesting for your students. And you can see different activities. I don't want to, sh to show you all, but you can uh, choose between basic and advanced. For example, Liliana is an expert with drones. <laughs> I remember the different activities. You can take a, a program flight with a drone or use inter uh, artificial intelligence. It's very interesting the, when how you can use this uh, um, type of um, activities with uh, students or virtual reality, the simulations are very, very common in different subjects. Um, Code Week is not only robotics, it's about computational thinking, and you can do different activities uh, to print pieces in 3D, or if you have an interesting experience with your students, you can share um, this experience uh, reading an article in Code Week uh, blog, and it's all. Uh, I'm going to to share the link, and you can do uh, different activities. Well, it's my last part, <laughs> and I'm going to stop to share. Thank you, Francisco. It's very inspiring. Uh, I can see the um, comments in the chat. It's uh, uh, our audience is enth enthusiastic about your uh, activities. Maybe you can show something uh, in particular later. Someone is asking that. But now the floor is yours, Ariana. It's your turn. And uh, we will go back to our activities later. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thank you both Liliana and Francisco. I think uh, my short presentations uh, will build up on your ideas uh, that you shared very well. So let me uh, share my uh, screen. I will share uh, my uh, full screen, so I think it will be easier. Just tell me please that you can see it. Yes. And I will start the uh, slide. So yeah. uh, yes, thank you. As you know, this uh, every day is Code Week, every week is Code Week, but we especially uh, celebrate EU Code Week in October, and it's uh, just around the corner, start, starting on the 7th and ending on the 22nd of October, and we call it a celebration of creating with code. 
And as uh, our colleagues have uh, uh, just mentioned, uh, coding is actually creativity. So it is about creating uh, with code. So just briefly, it is uh, EU Code Week is a grassroots movement uh, run by volunteers now over 10 years old, and it is supported by European Commission. Here on this slide, you can see who the members of the community are. First of all, on the, so to say, uh, the level of the ministry, we have education ministry coordinators who reach out to uh, teachers all over uh, their country in schools, uh, kindergartens. Uh, then we have EU Code Week ambassadors, and uh, Francisco has just shown us how you can get uh, to know your ambassador. And also there is a huge leading teachers network uh, and uh, leading teachers, uh, EU Code Week ambassadors, as, and also ministry coordinators uh, help promote uh, uh, Code Week and help promote uh, uh, coding and computational skills uh, in uh, classrooms uh, all over Europe, regardless of the age of the students or regardless of the subject that the teacher is teaching. Uh, for example, I teach uh, languages. I'm not an ICT teacher, but very often while I was still at school, I introduced coding to my students. And here in these photos, you can see uh, the, our community here at the meeting uh, recently uh, in Brussels. On the right hand side, there is a very uh, funny meme created by artificial intelligence, but I think it describes very well this code with community. So the, it is not only about coding and uh, about uh, uh, bugs, so to say, but it, it is also about bonding. And just like the eat winning community, that is uh, uh, also a community of teachers who work together. So is the code with community, uh, com community of uh, the teachers who, who code together and who want to bring coding to their classrooms. Uh, the objectives uh, of EU Code Week align very well with the EU Education Action Plan. So we want our, all teachers in Europe to adapt to the digital transformation. Uh, to, we want to spark teachers' interest in digital education. And also we want teachers to spread uh, uh, innovation and creativity in their education. Code Week is for everyone. We have just heard an excellent example by Liliana for very young students. So even those in kindergarten and uh, so to say seniors, everyone can participate. What you can do is just you add your coding activity to the Code Week map that you can find on our website. But there are a lot of other ben benefits that you can uh, gain from participating in Code Week, and these are only some of them. So let me go through some of them uh, a little bit in detail. So online courses uh, or massive open online courses or MOOC uh, that uh, Code Week has organized uh, since uh, 2018, they are open to all educators. Uh, you have free access to materials, resources, tools, digital technology. When we start, when they run, they are moderated by two moderators, uh, Eugenia and myself. Uh, but once finished, you still can access all the resources and then you can uh, you can do uh, do it at your pace uh, and uh, join, uh, join and uh, search for materials whenever it suits you best. There are many other teachers there usually uh, about uh, uh, 2,000 teachers from all over Europe, so you will learn from them. At the end, you will also uh, get a certificate of completion. So please uh, allow me uh, this opportunity to invite you to the latest uh, massive online open course that we are organizing uh, next week. So it starts in uh, just one week on the 9th of October. It is called Navigating Innovative Technologies Across the Curriculum, and it lasts until the 15th of November. So as the title says, it is for all teachers, for all teachers uh, teaching different subjects 
who want to uh, create a cross curricular project. And this is what you do in eTwinning. In eTwinning, you connect with teachers of all subjects and create a, pro a project. So this is what we want to achieve with this MOOC as well. Uh, there will be four modules, uh, the power of code, uh, introducing code with community, app development decoded, how can you code apps and not have a computer science background, then coding immersive experiences about augmented and virtual reality, and cracking the code to the future when you will have time to develop your activity that you can bring not only to the map, but also to your classroom. We will organize three live events. One will, will be with our leading teachers, so make sure that you join next week on the 10th to hear more how um, Code Week is uh, implemented in eTwinning projects. And finally, there is one final assignment that actually consists of two parts. You need to create one activity, a very short, but you will have, have a lot of input along the way. And then you will also assess your peers. This is how these MOOCs usually work. Then uh, Francisco has already mentioned some learning bits. We have really, really uh, a lot of learning bits on different topics. Uh, these learning bits are actually collections of three lesson plans for uh, younger kids, uh, kids in the lower primary and then upper secondary or primary, lower secondary, upper secondary, depending on your education system. And also they are available in 29 different languages. Coding at home developed by uh, also our guest speaker, Alessandro, who will be with you in a moment. It is a fantastic set of short activities, videos, materials, games, challenges that you can do uh, at home with your kids or in the classroom, why not? And they are excellent for developing uh, compute, computational thinking skills uh, and also creative thinking skills as well. We have a series uh, of podcasts. In fact, we have three seasons of podcasts. These are conversations with experts on different topics. And Stefania, uh, you have also been on one of the podcasts, right? Uh, and uh, so uh, check it out and see and find out about the really, really different topics from AI to uh, coding with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, art or uh, similar topics. Then maybe my favorite part, although I can't really say which is favorite, but this somehow, I don't know, is uh, something that I really, really like are challenges. And uh, for, for now we have about um, 20 challenges. They are very, very short activities that you can take and bring to your classroom. You can adapt them or you don't have to. You can just use them as they are. Uh, but they are also uh, prepared for teachers of all subjects. And uh, I am so happy to announce that starting from the 7th of October on the first day of Code Week, we will launch one new challenge every day. And Stefania, I know you are smiling because of your challenge will also be published on one of these days of EU Code Week. So uh, make sure that you check this page of, uh, of challenges. All these pages you can find under the tab resources. And Stefania uh, has developed a really, really fantastic uh, challenge that you will be able to use in your uh, subject and also create yourself or just play the one that uh, how she uh, prepared it in different languages, of course. And uh, of, and then uh, also not to forget, there is a challenge for all, Code Week for All challenge that you can also do uh, and so that you connect with like-minded uh, colleagues. And this is what eTwinning is all about. So uh, connect with teachers from three countries or uh, prepare 10 activities and you will earn a certificate of excellence. The numbers are really fantastic. Uh, every year we have a lot of uh, participants, a lot of activities are taking place. We are very, very proud that a lot of these uh, participants are girls. And uh, so uh, let's uh, let's uh, really uh, continue. And if you are not uh, participating, please do so. Uh, you can find all the information and support on the Code Week pages. Go to how to 
this is the resources, this is really, really an excellent page. Get in touch with your ambassadors, uh, you have just heard from uh, uh, Francisco, but also check out who your ambassadors are and contact them. Here is our email and also find us on different uh, 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 social media websites. Uh, and I'll also be here, so if you have any questions, uh, I will be very happy to respond. Thank you so much. And uh, over to you, uh, Stefania. Thank you, Ariana. While you were talking, I was thinking that I am really proud to be part of this community. And I would like to invite all of you to be part of this community because we can make the difference all together. So please join us. Come and uh, uh, try these activities. And now uh, it's a very great pleasure to give uh, the floor to Alessandro. You can introduce yourself because uh, you are the best, you know. <laughs> the floor is yours. Thank you, Stefania, for inviting me. Uh, thank you, Francisco. Thank you all. It's a pleasure to be here, in, uh, not only because of the very close uh, opening of the week, uh, but uh, also because of the importance of this group that was created several years ago and that uh, very proactively contributed uh, and is uh, still contributing uh, to the success of Code Week. So I'm uh, very happy with what uh, you are doing because I think that uh, e-twinning is uh, something that was uh, propedeutic to Code Week uh, in the sense that uh, this kind of cooperation among teachers. Uh, and uh, I know that uh, even if uh, I'm not allowed to work within the platform because I'm not a teacher, but I, I know that uh, many teachers uh, within uh, eTweening uh, uh, started uh, practicing coding before Code Week because uh, many of the projects that uh, eTweening promoted even before the very beginning of Code Week in 2013 were uh, already based uh, on activities that were very close to, to coding. So I'm uh, very, very happy that uh, eTweening is uh, still contributing uh, so much to the success of Code Week. Uh, I'm Alessandro Bogliolo, I'm uh, the uh, Code Week Ambassador for Italy, and I'm uh, also coordinating the group of Code Week Ambassadors. Uh, I've been coordinating this group since 2015. And um, uh, well, I'm uh, a university professor of computer systems at the University of Urbino. And what I would like to say is that just that, uh, as you know, uh, there are uh, many community members uh, that uh, are uh, very important for uh, uh, keeping uh, Code Week uh, growing uh, year after year because Code Week is, uh, after all, uh, a big international movement, a European movement. Uh, of teachers uh, willing uh, to, especially teachers uh, willing to uh, promote the diffusion of coding and computational thinking in schools. And uh, they are supported by two networks, uh, a network of Code Week ambassadors and a network of leading teachers, especially. And uh, leading teachers are nothing but teachers uh, who are uh, willing to help other teachers uh, to to participate uh, to Good Week, uh, and they are uh, particularly active in promoting uh, the participation to Good Week, uh, not only by helping uh, their peers, but also to making them aware of the opportunity of taking part in Good Week. And um, I know uh, much to add to what has been said, uh, but I would like to um, just point out uh, an opportunity which is uh, represented by so-called uh, open online activities uh, that are uh, available uh, on uh, on the portal of codeweek.eu. So open online activities are activities that uh, are online and they are open to the participation of uh, an arbitrary number of participants, uh, uh, either from a specific country or region or possibly all across Europe. And among these kind of activities, uh, there are some that can be followed by teachers uh, during, during school time. 
And uh, if this is the case, uh, these kind of activities uh, can be also of inspiration uh, of activities that then can be uh, performed by single classes or um, just uh, added to the map by teachers uh, who are facilitating the participation of their, of their class. So what I mean is that if there is an activity which is conducted online uh, during school time, and there is a teacher willing to participate together with the class to this activity, this kind of participation uh, is worth being added to the map of code week uh, in name of the teacher. So this is an opportunity for uh, breaking the ice uh, and uh, to taking part in something uh, which is big as code week in fact uh, is, uh, perceiving this size because you are doing something all together. And um, in particular, on Friday the 6th, there will be uh, one of these activities that I'm about to announce uh, that I will be conducting myself. And this uh, will be the beginning uh, of a scratch project uh, that then will be used as a route for uh, remixes. Uh, and uh, all the ambassadors uh, will be invited to make uh, a branch of this uh, remix trip for their countries uh, in order to allow leading teachers and all the teachers then keep making the, the trees proud during code week by keeping remixing. And the idea of the activity that will be conducted as an open online activity on uh, Friday the 6th uh, at 11 uh, a.m. Uh, Central European time, uh, is to uh, decide all together what the root project should be. So there will be a, a way for all the participants uh, to take a common decision, shared decisions uh, on uh, the key uh, elements uh, to be added to the root project. Then the project will, will be very simple at the beginning, uh, but uh, it uh, will work as a seed or as a root. And uh, I really hope that uh, all the ambassadors, leading teachers, uh, teachers, uh, and uh, event organizers will uh, keep uh, making the trees proud uh, in order to um, have the opportunity of adding to the map uh, as many activities as uh, scratch remixes of this uh, of this original project. So that's just an idea of a pan-European activity that is uh, starting uh, as a simultaneous and uh, interactive pan-European activity, but then can be uh, localized uh, also from a language standpoint uh, and uh, kept as an idea of uh, one of the many uh, different resources and activities that can be leveraged by teachers uh, to propose uh, coding uh, in their classes. Thanks, Alessandro, for this contribution. It's very important. And um, OK, I see uh, in the chat just a few questions. So if you want to uh, answer, I mean, all of you or all our guests, um, the question is uh, about uh, um, if uh, a teacher can take part uh, as a school or as a single teacher, I mean individually, uh, and uh, if any one of us can develop an activity by himself in his classroom. Uh, Alessandro, you want to answer? So I, I know that you have to go, so I just... Uh, yeah, think, I have to uh, go, but I can answer uh, if I got it right. Uh, so um, any open online activity as a specific target group and... Uh, in general, uh, open online activities, if they are really open, uh, can be participated by anyone, uh, single teachers or individuals, uh, even uh, if they are uh, not uh, teachers or pupils or students. But uh, it is uh, especially important to me that uh, uh, the activities that are conducted during school hour are taken into consideration by teachers uh, as activities that can possibly be followed together with their pupils, because in this case, those become also uh, private local activities. Uh, so um, that can, can be added to the map 
And this is a kind of a multiplication factor because uh, every teacher brings a class with them. So this means that uh, uh, the activity is not only followed by the tens or hundreds uh, of uh, people who are the teachers uh, really uh, deciding to follow them, uh, but this number will be multiplied by 10, 20, or whatever is uh, the size of the class. And so this means that these numbers will become not just participants, but uh, activities on the map. Each activity with their own participants. So for instance, if there is uh, this kind of activity, it is nice uh, that uh, the number of participants is not counted by the organizer of the open online activity, but rather it is counted by local uh, uh, representative of the of the groups uh, taking part in the activity. Okay, many thanks for your answer. And uh, I have a question. It's not just a question. It's just uh, a person who is uh, telling us that uh, uh, he has never participated to Code Week, and I hope uh, to um, that he will have some inspiration from our proposed activities. And maybe Francisco or Liliana can suggest something simple for the beginners. Okay, I I'm sure that we have to leave us. So Thank you. Enjoy the week and uh, do your best to make uh, this edition a success. Thank you very much for what you do. Thank you, Alessandro. Bye. Bye, Alessandro. Bye -bye. Well, Stefania, well, there are many activities because Code Week is for for everybody, not not only for teachers, not only for students. Many people, uh, all people uh, do activities and it's very interesting because uh, you can do uh, activities with uh, computational thinking without uh, robots, without computers, uh, speaking about uh, different um, the laterality, the, you go right, go uh, left, or using uh, 3D printer, printers or using uh, virtual reality. In my presentation, there are 25 activities. <laughs> you can choose many activities. Or if you want to, to do activities in class, uh, activities from Liliana or, or your activities are a good example that you can do, no? but uh, Code Week is a family. It's a family with uh, uh, the same topic that uh, we like, is robotics, is uh, uh, computational thinking, but the best is the opportunity to share all your activities. And I want to uh, animate to all the people to, to use or to share the activities in our web page. Thank you, thank you. I agree with you. Liliana, it's yours. I would add just a little piece of advice, because if you are a newcomer and you're not very sure of what to do, you can start by using one of our examples, submit it, try it. And if you have questions, reach out for the teachers that posted the, the activity initially or your local ambassador or leading teacher. And then along uh, the path, you'll be gaining confidence and you'll be preparing your own activities. Either if you don't have lots of material, you can do great activities with only, for instance, as I told you, a, a small T-shirt, a piece of chalk, uh, the ground outside. So you can try simple things and then uh, increase the level and reach out for people. As Francisco said, we are all a community, we are all a family, and we are all glad to share and help you coming aboard. Afterwards, we'll be very glad to try your own activities. So feel free to share them with us. Okay. And Stefania, um, if I may. Yes, to it, Ariana, yes. I, yeah, I, I think what Liliana and Francisco have shared is really, really excellent advice. And I would uh, just add to it that uh, you can start with challenges, for for example, and do these challenges and then create your own challenges. So start small and then you will see that uh, the activities come uh, one after another and they are uh, more uh, challenging, more complicated and you, are, you become better at it. And if I may, I would share here uh, one of the challenges that we already had, it is video sensing game. So you can just 
uh, open it in your classroom and students uh, have to stand in front of your computer. They don't need their computers and they need to uh, collect uh, cold weak pins, you know, like cold weak bubbles. And then afterwards you can uh, ask them to create their own, collect your own, uh, for example, eat winning project logos or whatever. Uh, they can think of. So really just start small and then uh, all the things with, will follow. OK, uh, thank you for uh, for this. Uh, as a final brief speech to link the contributions of our guests, I would like uh, to um, summarize and reflect with you why EU Code Week is of a crucial importance. First of all, digital literacy. Code Week promotes coding skills, which are becoming increasingly essential in various uh, aspects of life and work. It empowers individuals with the ability to understand and create technology rather than just consuming it. Second, job opportunities. By participating in Code Week, individuals particularly students, can acquire skills that can open up a wide range of career opportunities in technology-related fields. Third, innovation and problem solving. Coding encourages uh, people to think critically, analyze issues, and develop innovative solutions. These skills are valuable and uh, uh, not only in the tech industry, but also in other fields. And also cross-disciplinary, cross-curricular uh, learning, because Code Week promotes the integration of coding and programming into various subjects, disciplines, including science, maths, art, and more. This interdisciplinary approach enhances the overall educational experience and demonstrates the real world application of coding. And also, we have talked a lot about that, community building, because Code Week fosters a scene of community among educators, students, and tech enthusiasts. Uh, it provides uh, a platform of networking, uh, sharing best practices as we are going to uh, share to today and collaborating on educational uh, initiatives, uh, leading to a stronger and more connected community as we are. Uh, and also could we encourage uh, lifelong learning uh, as it we name that do thus. Uh, it's uh, not uh, uh, it's not limited to students. People of all ages can participate, reinforcing the idea that education is a continuous journey. In summary, EU Code Week plays a vital role in equipping individuals, students, and people with the digital skills needed for the present and above all for future. It promotes innovation, inclusivity, and global competitiveness, while fostering a sense of community and responsibility. So with this, uh, I would like again to thank uh, our guests, uh, but above all, all of you uh, for your attention to be here and to be interested in this community and in our aim to involve our students more and more in coding. So uh, Alexia is here now with us. Uh, I really appreciate your presence here. Thank you very much and uh, uh, see you soon in the next initiatives. Alexia, it's your turn. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Stefania, and uh, thank you all for this inspiring journey into Code Week. I think participants got a lot out of it, especially from the practical insights on the activities. And I take the opportunity to remind all our participants that all the slides, the recording, and so all the links for the activities are now available in the chat and will be available in the groups mentioned in the chat. So no worries if you miss something because uh, 
the slides will be available. And um, I think since uh, we have still some minutes, maybe we can close. Uh, I would like to ask you yeah. a last curiosity, uh, just uh, that could be maybe interesting for our participants. How did you meet for the first time uh, Code Week? Like, what was your personal journey in meeting this initiative? Uh, that could be maybe nice to hear for our participants and their personal journey. Or if you are afraid to begin with this new journey because it's uh, a very common uh, feeling when you begin to do something new. So uh, this is the feeling that uh, we had at the beginning of this great adventure. But I, I can tell you that uh, it, it's worth it because we are part of a community. We, we all uh, take part of these challenges and we are very happy to give time to this uh, community. That's great to hear. And I think it's very comforting also for our participants. OK, then I thank you again all. I thank also my colleague Marta. And I think we can wrap up here. And yes, I wish you a very nice evening. And I hope to see you soon in the next uh, eTwinning webinars. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye all.